Hey everyone, I want to talk to you about predicting weather and about avoiding lightning strikes. Now the first thing we're going to talk about is lightning. Um, in Florida, you're looking at the highest frequency of lightning strikes in the whole United States due to its location. So if you have astrophobia or the fear of lightning, Florida might not be for you. Uh, Florida has more deaths from lightning than all other weather phenomena combined. So with that said, let's talk about some things about lightning. Now lightning, if you see lightning off in the distance, a storm off in the distance, it's time to leave because lightning has been known to strike 20 miles away from the area of rain. So you're not safe if you think you are when it's 20 miles away. Now one thing to do is to calculate the distance. Now the correct way to do that is count the seconds when you see it from when you hear the thunder and divide it by five. So if you count 10 seconds and divide that by five, it's two miles away. Okay, that's how far away that lightning strike was. All right, now when it comes to avoiding lightning and say you get stuck in a storm, and I have in Florida, and it's scary. It really is scary. That's the whole statistics about one in a million goes away real quick if you're in the middle of a lightning storm in Florida, especially when you're like four miles away from the nearest road or person. So what you need to do is don't stand by a tree or a group of trees. You want to find an opening away from the trees. You need to make sure the ground that you're on is not a flood area, okay? Because Florida is like a giant sponge. It just soaks water up and just the water just rises. It's at like ground zero. So it's going to get wet real quick. Now, water is a conductor of electricity. And that is how most people die from lightning strikes. It's not a direct hit. It's from it hitting here and traveling through the ground to their body through water or an area that's a good conductor. The best thing to do is stand on like a loose, loose type of gravel, uh, dry area, you know, raised up just a little bit with surrounding trees but in an open area, okay? Now if you're with a group of people, don't stand together. You want to spread apart. You don't want to group together because then you're going to become a giant spot for that lightning to strike. It's going to go to where it attracts to and if there's a group of people standing there, you're all conductors and it's going to go right towards you, okay? So it's safest to stay spread apart. And when it comes to standing, you want to do this. You want to stand on the balls of your feet like this. Do not put your hands on the ground. Wear rubber shoes. If you're a barefooter, bring something with you in Florida because I walk barefoot too, but I always have boots on there too because I don't like walking through poison ivy barefoot. So wear rubber shoes, dry ground. Stand on the balls of your feet. You're in an open area away from tall trees, okay? I know it sounds crazy. A lot of people think, oh, well, I'll stand by something tall. Well, then you're going to get whatever that thing is hit, okay? So stand like that, put your head down, and pray. <laughs> That's the best thing I can tell you is this right here is your safest bet. Keep your heels off the ground. The least amount you're touching, just like if it's a car battery, if you have just a little bit touching, it's not going to give it enough juice to start that car. But if you have that whole terminal touching that battery terminal, it's going to give you enough juice to start that car. Okay. Same thing goes here. The less you got touching, the less it chance you have to get struck by lightning. Okay. So stand like this. Crouch your head down. Be as low as you possibly can. Crouch right down. But don't let your hands touch the ground. Okay. You don't want more points of contact. All right. Now that we looked at lightning, which is important, I believe, uh, I want you to look at how to predict oncoming weather via the clouds or some other signs. We'll look at the other signs real quick. Um, if you notice that if you're rheumatic, you know, maybe you're, you have a little bit of rheumatism, you can notice that your, your joints get weak and, you know, you can feel it when you wake up. That's a sign that there's probably a difference in pressure, you know, maybe a storm, some rain's coming, okay? Also, you'll notice that your wounds, if you have a wound, a cut or something, it's going to be a little more sore. It's going to itch a little more. All right? So you want to look at that. Um, you're going to look at uh, more high humidity. You're going to see more wind. It's going to be cooler. Everyone knows when it gets a little cooler, you say, oh, it's going to rain. Okay? So you're looking at that. Um, now, here's some interesting ones. Smoke from your fire. You know, usually it'll, it'll rise. But if it's falling to the ground, 
that's a sign that there's a change of weather on the way. Okay, snakes will expose themselves. Spider webs are going to disappear. They're going to just go away. They're not going to be out. Um, Dad, sorry about my dog here. She's, she's having fun with me out here today. All right, now we're going to take a look at some cloud indicators. Uh, your first one we're going to look at would be on a blue sky day, you see little white swirly clouds off in the distance. You know, you can tell that they're like sharp and piercing, which means that there's high winds coming. And high winds and those little white swirly clouds usually indicate a change of weather on the way. So you know there that if you see that, take alarm and just start looking for some of them little signs. Start looking for a change in humidity, temperature. Start looking and putting all these things together to see, okay, maybe there's a storm coming. Now, there's a lot of different clouds that you can look at, and there's a lot to study. I'm not going to even be able to cover them all and what they all mean and their, their elevations. And, you know, that's going to have to be something you do on your own, and I feel it's an important thing to know, and it's a good thing to know. It's one of those things where you won't need a GPS or a computer or your cell phone to tell what's about to happen in the weather. And at the end of me explaining this, I'm going to have a scenario where I was out kayaking and did just that. And another, another cloud system you can look at is Stratus. Stratus can indicate stormy weather. Uh, it's not usually serious. Um, it's just, you know, it's one of those things where you look at the other signs and see what's about to happen. Um, Alto Stratus, light continuous precipitation. Uh, Stratocumulus, uh, no change in weather. So if you see those, that's going to be one of your nicer days. Um, cumulus is the one you want to watch out for. If you see cumulus clouds, um, that usually can turn into cumulonimbus. And what you're going to look for on a cumulus is if it has a dark, you know, your cumulus clouds here, and then under, like the very base of it, it's dark, which indicates there's precipitation in there. And if these cumulonimbus start building together and getting tall, like a big building, you know, they grow. And they're low in elevation. They're not way up there. You know, the top of it's way up there, but the bottom's down here. Okay? That indicates there's probably heavy thunderstorms on the way. So if you see cumulus, look for cumulonimbus forming. And then you'll know it's time to leave. Now, this is important because in Florida you have the ocean, and you might be a boater. You might be a kayaker. You might be someone who likes to be on the water. Well, if, if that's true, it's not always just the woods, you know. You might be out on the water and, and this stuff comes about. It's good to know it in case you forgot to check the weather or you don't have a NOAA weather radio on you. It's good to see those, th those signs and be able to say, you know what, it's time to go in because you don't want to get stuck on the ocean in a thunderstorm. It's dangerous and scary. Um, another one would be your low cirrus clouds. Those can be bad weather within the next 24 hours if you see those. So with, with, all, that, with all this said about indicators and um, little signs other than clouds to predict weather coming your way, um, I want to show you this little blurb that I did while I was out kayaking with a friend. I want to recommend before I show you this part is study up on these clouds. I want you to go look them up. I want you to research them. I want you to, to, to keep learning them over and over. Print them out or get a good book. Get a good survival book. Get a thick one. You know, check the authors and see if they're legit. So check this little blurb out and go try to do it on your own after you learn some of this stuff. It's, it's fun and it makes you feel good when you can predict the weather without technology because it can be done. Even when you're out on the water, you need to be watching the weather. Everything looks nice right now. Nice sunny day. Okay? But when you look at these clouds, when you see white swirls like that, that can indicate high winds, can indicate an oncoming storm. You've got cumulonimbus clouds growing. So you need to watch these clouds and how they form. It's good to watch this because if you get out on the water, and you didn't check the weather, it can come on quick, especially in South Florida. You can get stranded out here, stuck in a storm and drown. 
it's serious so it's good to know what kind of clouds you're looking at you know don't let the beautiful day deceive you because sometimes when it's beautiful that indicates an oncoming storm when it's clear like this and you got these clouds forming here you got another cumulonimbus there okay and then cirrus clouds now low cirrus can indicate high winds and rain so even out on the water it's important to be checking for these signs and now when you look you see all these big clouds forming those big tall poofy clouds cumulonimbus with the dark bottoms that's what you're looking for when you see that that means there could possibly be a storm coming and it's gotten bigger and it's coming this way okay that means it's time to start heading home so when you see that dark bite that dark base on the bottom of them clouds and you see it grouping and forming and getting bigger and that blue sky starts disappearing even if it still doesn't seem like the wind or nothing's changing it can still come on a dime so be watchful for that and look what we have it's raining over here you can see the rain falling the trees are in the way now rain rain go away yeah so now you know that you need to look out for these clouds because this can come upon you real quick out there and if you're five miles out on a kayak you're not gonna get back in time so be sure there you go now you can see where it's raining and that's right right over the ocean right now